I'm working on some designs for some upcoming creature themed projects and I thought you might like to see some of that process. So in this video, I'll demonstrate a technique that you can use with your leather armor or other cosplay projects using this 3D printed claw. I've designed a lot of creature themed and dragon projects in the past, and we have quite a few more in the works. Our custom projects are separate from the academy and don't generally become YouTube videos, but going forward I do want to start sharing some techniques and components from some of these projects so that you can still learn from them as we go. So this video will give a peek about how I do some of the early design steps while I experiment with some of the test pieces that will help me decide on what I want to do. And one of the things I'm experimenting more with is incorporating 3D printed elements into our custom projects. And while my leather projects aren't going anywhere anytime soon, the things that can be done with 3D printers these days are just too good to ignore. The 3D printer we'll be using here is the Artillery Sidewinder X2. This video was made possible with their support. I'll be setting it up and going over some of the main features during this build. And there's a lot of good selling points, but I was really impressed by how fast and easy it was to set up and start printing. For someone newer to 3D printing like myself, this is probably what I'm looking for the most. Even including the time for unboxing, it was ready to print within a few minutes. The printer comes with a nice material rack and the filament was easy to load and has a run out sensor. The build plate is 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, so a build volume this size could handle something like helmets for example, and it has a lattice glass platform that is self-leveling with rapid heating. These claws were the first thing that I printed with this device and everything went smoothly. The print was very quiet and it felt pretty quick. The client for this project wants a vicious looking suit, which is always super fun. One of the elements that will go into this look will be having a lot of spikes and sharp bits throughout. I've done a lot of spikes and things with leather, and if there's interest I can make some technique videos on these as well. Just let me know in the comments what you would like to see. When I set out to design a suit, one of the things I like to do is come up with a batch of interesting decorative themes that will go throughout the armor, and these spikes will be part of a test swatch, and then I'll run them by the client for their input and keep building upon the concept bit by bit. The spikes I'll be using in this demonstration are ones I made in ZBrush, but I don't have a guide for this step since this was my first time designing something in 3D, and I'm still trying to get the hang of it myself, but I will make the files available, so check the description below for some details if you want to print these yourself. The one single file gives a lot of flexibility, that's one of the nice things about the digital workflow. I make the spike once, and now I can scale it to a wide range of sizes and even tweak the shape like I did with making these claw versions more narrow. Slicing the file was very easy with the provided software, I just loaded the file, and scaled it to the shape I wanted, duplicated it, and adjusted the scale for each one and loaded it into the included thumb drive. I printed the claws with completely default settings. Now that we have our spikes printed, we need to attach them to our projects somehow. I'll show you a few ways you can go about this, but you can certainly take the basics and branch off with your own thing. I'm using a piece of poster board to make a quick pattern. The shape could be anything here. You could imagine this being any sort of overlay piece that you attach to your armor project or even the base component itself. And then I'll trace the piece onto some 9 to 10 ounce of vegetable sand leather. This is some scrap I had laying around, and then cut it out with shears. I didn't want these pieces to look just stuck on, so I designed a small flange at the base that will hold the pieces in if we can make an opening through the leather. This means we need to cut some holes into the leather, roughly the size of the base of the spike. First I'm going to trace around the outside perimeter. I'm using ink so you can see better what I'm doing, but you could just score it lightly. I want the fit to be tight, so I'll need to make the opening a little bit smaller than what we trace. I'll use a swivel knife to make the cut. If you have a narrow bladed swivel knife and have it sharp, you can potentially just make your entire cut with the swivel knife. To make the fit a little easier, we can cut it at a bit of an angle, or from the back side I'm going to skive down the inner edge at an angle. You can use a French edger, a skiving knife, or an X-Acto knife for this. This will move a little bit of bulk so we don't have to fight it as much when we're trying to get the fit just right. One of the great properties of leather is how it can be stretched and molded, so I'm going to expand the opening a little bit here, and then we can slip the spike through. You can also just carve the line first, and then use an X-Acto to trim the rest.
and it can hurt to use some glue to help secure things together. The fit should be pretty close at this stage, but to get it seamless, you'll need to tool the leather in a way that compresses the leather opening against the base of the spike. Basically, any tooling or stamping you do around the base of the spike should do the trick as it will compress and stretch the leather. You can use a common beveler stamp around the ring and then bevel with a smooth beveling tool. Then you can use a modeling spoon or a similar tool to add some texture to the bezel and push it more tightly against the spike base. Alternatively, you can bevel first and then follow up with a larger texture stamp. If you would like to learn how to make your own stamps like this, the one I'm using here is demonstrated in our premium organic stamp making guide, which is available at the Academy. It's great for filling large areas when you want to go for an organic look. On the top spike, you can see what it would look like if you don't carve an outer bevel. It's really just up to your preference, and I'm only showing a few options out of many possibilities. Again, it's great to follow up with a modeling spoon to make the fit more snug and to add some texture. To make sure the spikes stay in place, I recommend you cover the back with some sort of material. It can be just about anything, but in this example I'm using some scrap of chrome tan leather and just gluing it on. I imagine by now your gears are turning and you already have some great ideas of what you could use something like this for. We have a few arm pieces in the shop, so you can see how the spikes at this size could easily go on such pieces. You'll just have to plan ahead a little bit and imagine the function, and try not to put them somewhere that you'll stab yourself too easily. I hope this gives you some ideas for your own projects, and be sure to let me know what sort of techniques you would like to see me demonstrate. I'll see you in the next one.